So let me just start. Hi, everybody. Um, we're broadcasting live from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Um, and we are here for our weekly webinar where we'll be talking about Spectrio Digital Signage, one of the newest products available in the Vendaster marketplace. Okay. So my name is Kama Drainsom. I am Product Marketing Manager here at Vendasta, and our special guest for today is Glenn Clements, Head of National Accounts at Spectrio. Hi, everybody. All right, awesome. So before we begin, I just uh, want to tell everybody the usual reminder that we have every week. If you have any questions at all, we'll get to them towards the end of the webinar. Just drop your questions in and we'll try our best to get to them. If not, I will personally follow up with you after the webinar. And with that, I hand the presentation to you, Glenn. Thank you for the introduction, uh, folks, and thanks for everybody joining. Um, again, Glenn Clements, I'm, uh, I'm head of national accounts with Spectrio. I am physically based in Charlotte, North Carolina uh, today, and we have offices uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and our, our corporate office is down in Oldsmar, Florida. So we're going to bring you through, you know, a little bit about Spectrio, what we do, what we stand for, so who our clients are, and then we're going to drill down specifically into our digital signage offer through Vendasta. And again, as you, I'm sure there'll be a number of questions, at least I hope there will be, and we'll, we'll, we'll take as much time as needed at the end to address all of them. All right, so perfect. So digital science solutions, like there's a lots of different ways we are helping our clients, big and small, communicate visually inside of uh, retail environments, vet hospitals, uh, healthcare facilities, new car dealerships, restaurants, I mean, it's pretty wide and deep, the type of things we're doing. So we're gonna kind of break down our different offerings today because we've got lots of different ways that we can help clients communicate visually, a compelling message around services, products, things on sale, why, do, why they should buy, what they should be thinking about, and so on. So before we jump into that, we'll give you a little quick uh, history of about Spectro, because I'm sure we are brand new to uh, everybody on this call. But I wouldn't be surprised if you've interacted with the Spectro product uh, in a retail environment. And as, as we go through these slides here, Camille, next one's good. Uh, I'll kind of break that down a little bit more. So so we think about the customer journey in a, in a, in a brick and mortar facility. It doesn't have to be retail, could be healthcare, could be a car dealership, could be a class A office space, right? So we offer a variety of customer touch points. We think of it as kind of 360 degree marketing. One of our most popular is on hold marketing. You call a pizza joint, you call a dentist, you call a new, uh, a, 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 your auto repair shop and you get put on hold that's the underpinnings of this company. We probably have around 50,000 clients throughout the U.S. and Canada that um, have, are, are offering that service by Spectrio. It's a little bit of jingle and then a custom message. So we have, we have voice talent in Florida, and we're typically creating new messages for our clients. Some, some want to do it monthly. Some do it quarterly. But those are the type of programs we offer. We also, one of our newer products is, is scent marketing, believe it or not. If you've ever gone to a casino in Vegas or stayed at a Starwood property or a Marriott property or a Holiday Inn and you were encountered a unique fragrance that wouldn't normally be there, that's scent marketing. It's been around for a while. It started back in the casinos, probably in the late 80s, early 90s, really to cover up cigarette smoke and it evolved from there into more of a kind of a branding uh, experience for mostly hotels, some class A office space, certainly assisted living facilities and so on to create um, just a better guest arrival experience, right? And so Weston is probably the best example I can use if anyone on the phones ever walked through a Weston lobby, no matter where you are in the world and you experience the Weston fragrance, they call it white tea. That's a branded message that it helps them communicate through the nose for any property. They all smell the same. Interactive kiosk, which is not something we offer through, through Fandasta now, but think about wayfinding in a mall and you want to figure out how to get to the store you're looking for, things like that. Um, overhead music and messaging, that's probably where you've experienced some of our products or uh, the, the Spectrio products because we do lots of work in restaurants, hotels, you know, think about licensed music and then sometimes licensed music with overhead messaging. That's kind of what we do. 
Digital signage is certainly at the core of our business today. We own a number of intellectual properties that we've acquired through the years. We'll talk about uh, the product that we have available through Vendasta. Wi-Fi marketing is new to us. It's not a product we own, and it's really designed for longer dwell times. It's just a way to capture customer data and remarket to them after they visited the store. It's certainly not for every uh, Every retail environment, the longer the dwell time and the more likely people are going to want to use free Wi-Fi, those are the type of folks we're targeting with that product. So restaurants, new car dealerships, places like that. So the next slide will tell you a bit more about us, kind of a, our company journey, if you will. So lots of acquisitions through the year. We're actually up close to about 100,000 customers now. Very low churn. Our products tend to be very, very sticky. Um, everything we do is in-house from support to um, you know, custom creative to our voice talent. They're all people that are employed by Spectrio. So a lot of the content we use for our digital signage is created in-house. Uh, around 90,000 customer locations, as I said, and you're seeing a good kind of smattering of the different types of customers. You'll uh, We have Subways to Whole Foods to Fiat Chrysler Automotive, Novon Health, Pizza Hut, McDonald's, and, and so on. So our, you know, our expertise is really is in digital signage because we have around 30,000 screens deployed out there and 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 truly every month month over month about 50 percent of our new business we are a subscription-based business right recurring revenue model so about 50 percent of our growth every month is coming from digital signage the rest of the growth is some cent wi-fi marketing certainly on hold um, but but digital signage is is the is the lion share of our new biz development So, company's been around for a while. 1986 formed as an on-hold company. The first several acquisitions were were certainly within the on-hold space. They would buy up smaller companies that had a good recurring revenue of on-hold clients because it's very very sticky. Once people have an on-hold client, uh, an on-hold service, much like a website, they don't change it too often. They kind of stick with what they have. Um, they got into digital. We got into digital signage, you know, about 10 years ago when it was kind of new. Uh, it's certainly not new anymore. Like I said, most of our growth is coming from, from digital signage today. We merged with a company called Codigo, which has their own uh, IP uh, platform, mostly for banking, and that's digital signage. Um, we, we, we bought our first uh, intellectual property in overhead music from a company by the name of Retail Radio. That was uh, a little year and a half ago. And I came from a company by the team of 10 Foot Wave, and all we did was digital signage 100%. It's the only thing we had. It's what we focused on. We focused on some real niche markets and, and built a really nice business out of it. And that's the product, that's the platform. The 10 foot wave platform is the one that's available through uh, Vendasta. Okay, so lots of different brands we work with, lots of client locations, several different countries. We've got resellers. You can find our products in Europe and Asia and all over you know, the US and, and every state, in fact. So. All right, so when it comes to digital signage, look, I'm sure everyone on this call has, is seeing screens, right? And, and you, know, you know, digital out-of-home advertising has, has exploded in the last several years. Uh, I was just at a food court the other day. I went to a movie with my wife and walked through the food court, probably 15 different restaurants there. I think only one didn't have some digital signage experience. When McDonald's started going all in with digital signage about five years ago, things change for a lot of other businesses because you know, a lot of business owners may go to McDonald's and see it and say, wow, I was impacted by that. I may have made an unplanned purchase as a result of seeing something on the screen because static is dead. Print is dead. You know, videos tell stories. That's why ESPN is going to videos only brain processes information faster. And it's just more likely to capture attention than just a poster on a wall or some static menu board with, you know, sticky prices up there, right? So we've got, I think, one more slide that kind of talks about end user benefits, but you can Google this. This is, you know, it's not something we made up. There's lots of um, industry studies to show the impact of digital signage and the fact that you do get a real sales lift as a result of putting interesting content on screens that tells a story and provides a benefit to the customer. Uh, a few more, again, stats to show, you know, 
what supports this? Why are, why are more and more brands of America doing this? And it's because it's a, not a very inexpensive thing to do anymore, right? It used to be years ago, you'd have to spend $1,500 on a screen, you know, $400 on a media device, and then have no content and, have, and then be in the content creation business, which can be expensive. And, you know, over the last several years, the, tech, the TV screens have dropped, the cost of the hardware has dropped, and, you know, more and more companies like us are creating more content for our end users to then take control of a message. So we're seeing a lot more and more of it. So people are adopting digital signage at a much more rapid rate than they ever have because at point of purchase, when someone's there and ready to buy, you know, you want to give them a reason to buy and, and maybe, you know, buy more than they're thinking about initially. So I think we're going to kind of break down the different products. Camille over the next several slides and how we talk about them. And then certainly, like I said, at the end, we'll, we'll certainly take questions. So I'll break these down and then we'll, we'll kind of chunk them down one at a time. Our, certainly our most popular is gonna be a digital menu board. Think about, it, think about what McDonald's does, right? If you've got menus and pricing, um, that's a digital menu board. We also see them in other walks of life that look a lot different than McDonald's. And I'll show you some of the other things we're doing but it's certainly our most popular. Our private label TV, which I have a slide to explain that, it's an alternative to cable. We become the cable provider, family-friendly content. For some customers, they, um, they have lots of competitors advertising on their screens in their waiting rooms. This eliminates that. It eliminates Fox News. It eliminates Jerry Springer, eliminates CNN. I mean, that's what we're hearing more and more. It's the politics of today in the U.S. or are, are driving our private label TV business. Corporate employee communications is, is obviously not public facing. It's really used for, and we've got them all throughout our, our business here and in Tulsa and, and in Tampa. It really is just a way to kind of bring the company together, right? So what are the holidays? Are we celebrating new um, employees joining the company? Do people have um, anniversaries coming up or birthdays or, hey, what's going on in Charlotte this weekend? So we do that um, on our own here, but we're certain to get a lot more and more requests for just a way to communicate with our employees in a way that uh, they just haven't traditionally done it. A feature showcase board is more like, it's probably the most simplest thing you can do. It's just kind of full screen ads, weather, maybe some RSS feeds, but it's kind of a no nonsense way to just I don't need a menu board. Uh, I don't want that private label TV, but I need something else. So we just call it a showcase board. It's more full screen ads and other interesting information to help promote a service or a product at point of purchase. Live TV pass through is, um, it's certainly not our most popular, but it does allow someone who needs cable because they want their ability to change channels in a, in, a, in, a, in a retail environment. And they're okay that maybe competitors advertise on the screen. They're okay that, you know, someone might put on CNN or Fox. Uh, but it does allow us to kind of wrap that screen and brand it um, with a customer's logo and then a right side playlist with images, text, that will then promote certain things about that business while someone's eyes are focused on that center screen where the, um, the TV or the channel happens to be playing. So uh, this, is, this is just one of many different layouts we have for, uh, for a menu board. This happens to be some kind of bagel shop. It certainly helps modernize a facility. I think most of our clients agree when they put something like in, in this in their business, it creates kind of like a halo effect. Uh, for one to many, one to one to one thousand, however many locations a client may have, this really really becomes a way to not only promote obviously their their high margin services and give informative information, but you know remotely kind of update and push new content from our corporate office to one to a thousand locations within minutes there's a significant advantage, right? So we're also saving a lot for our customers that are traditionally doing print. You know, you change your price on your turkey, bacon, avocado when it's print, what do you gotta do? You gotta print something new, right? Imagine you have a thousand locations. So that's why you're seeing this more and more, particularly in, in fast food and restaurants where lots of different changes in prices and inventory controls. This allows just a much more efficient way to do it. 
So some places, other places we might see it, right? Some other applications. We're seeing a lot in automotive. I mean, that's where I came from at 10 for Wave. That was certainly our power alley. Lots of new car dealerships, lots of auto repair. You might see them in a Goodyear. You'd see them in a Midas. You could see them in an independent repair shop. Uh, General Motors does work with us. Fiat Chrysler does work with us. So these are just some really good applications where if you have clients out there that are in that any of these markets, you know, don't be surprised if they're thinking about it or talking to somebody about digital signage and you guys, you know, if you have their ear, you guys now have a solution to help them kind of deliver this message, you know, at point of purpose. But we're, but certainly what we're seeing here, all these popular applications, I mean, this is where our growth is. Honestly, pharmacies, surprisingly enough, we're seeing a lot of that. Convenience stores now, they're going high end and high tech. So where they're selling at the counter, they're selling, you know, sandwiches and things like that. They're all doing digital signage and they're talking to people about it every day. Customer Lounge TV, Private Lounge TV. I talked about us becoming the cable company, right? So again, these are the different um, um, OEM, um, I should say, as seen on TV providers. We get CBS Sports, we get Newsy, lots of CBS content, talk show. It's short form though. It's like kind of like what we call magazine style, two to three minute excerpts of as seen on TV. And then the ability between the short form entertainment right on the, the dashboard of a client's uh, content management system, they would have the ability to promote other things. It doesn't have to be videos. They can put in text messages, other ways they want to communicate. Again, no competitive ads. Get rid of Fox, CNN. That's the number one thing we're hearing today. It's creating fights in business establishments. Bad stuff like Jerry Springer, Who's Your Daddy episodes. And, you know, it, it becomes in itself um, a really easy to manage program because all the entertainment automatically updates for the customer location. And all they want to do is maybe put something in between the spots that promotes their business. They also have the ability to kind of have text message down here and some other static messages or dynamic content feeds, Facebook, uh, Instagram, weather would all render here. So think of this as kind of two different ways you can market in between the entertainment. Again, nice wide variety of short form could be a Rachel race cooking segment followed by a, what just happened on the PGA, PGA tour this weekend or when football's back a little, little two minute recap on what happened in the NFL this week, baseball the same, and then, you know, drop in something that maybe there while the customers are paying attention, something to, you know, kind of upsell a certain service. So again, as I mentioned earlier, the really a kind of a no nonsense kind of full screen, different pieces of content that flow one after another. These are usually what you're seeing here, obviously are static, but they could be 15 to 30 second spots that just toggle from one to the other, one to the other, and all easily managed right on their dashboard and their content management system. I'll show you a screenshot of what the dashboard looks like. We won't have time today to run through a full demonstration, a full product demonstration. I'm certainly happy to do that one-on-one uh, -on -one with anybody who, who's interested in learning more, but a really super simple content management system um, and a really easy way to update. And again, real-time updates. You know, I don't have to be in my store to do it. It's all cloud-based. And again, corporate communications, like I'm saying, we're starting to see more and more of this. We have it in our own uh, offices here. People notice it. It's, uh, you know, HR loves it because it's a great way for them to talk about benefits or, you know, hey, we just, for example, this week, we just went through uh, re-enrollment for our, um, our insurance. So we sat through a series of meetings and now all the screens in our office are reminding people that the deadlines are here. But it really is a good place for, you know, culture, workplace safety, highlight employees, special events, things going on in town this weekend, right? So. So this is how it all kind of works, right? It's really simple. Uh, we provide everything that you need other than uh, the TV, right, uh, and internet. We've got this small little media player. It's an Android device. It has built-in Wi-Fi, or it can plug right into a router. Most folks are just picking up the Wi-Fi signal in the store. You have a remote control that helps get everything connected. After you get everything connected, you really don't need that remote again. Um, power adapter and an HDMI cable. Your customers have their own internet and they provide a TV. And I imagine they're gonna need some type of way to install, right? 
content is certainly typically the biggest ongoing cost and maintaining the content so it stays relevant. Uh, super simple setup, like I said, um, small little purple media device ships, connects to the client screen, get it connected to Wi-Fi, they log in, and, and in every case, uh, we've had several orders through Vendasta already, and in every case, the user's account is set up right around the same time the device ships. And the device may take four to five days to get to the ultimate location, and then maybe a couple more days to set up. So in advance of that, the clients are in there making their own menus, dropping in their own content. This Our CMS allows for them to bring in any of their own images, videos, and so on. Really super simple setup. Um, if you've ever hooked up an Apple TV or a Roku TV or something, a Roku box, very similar concept to that. So the content management system um, is really designed to allow you know, one to as many locations as the client cares to manage content from a simple dashboard, right? They get a playlist. They have multiple playlists. In fact, many times if they've got different messages for different parts of a building or different businesses all together, or if they have one common playlist, which feeds every store, easy to set up, uh, also allows them to see the health of their device. Are they offline? Are they online? Are they uh, are they struggling to connect to the internet, right? Uh, one note, because it's come up already with the first several orders, is each TV screen, which the customer would provide on their own, needs its own device, right? So if you're gonna order something through our online marketplace, for every device, there is a subscription associated, right? So if you've got a client with three TVs and they wanna do three different messages, one for each TV, you need three different devices and three different subscriptions. The only way to avoid multiple subscriptions is they say, hey, I've got three TVs. They're going to all be very fairly close to each other, and I'm going to have identical content. They're going to need an HDMI splitter on their own. You need one device and then one subscription. But as soon as you want something unique on a second screen, it does require another piece of hardware and, and another subscription. And in fact, if one TV is here and the other one's you know, in a different room altogether, and there's no way to get an HDMI uh, to split to it, you'll need a second device and you'll need a second subscription. But it's all very affordable, and there's plenty of margin in there for you guys to resell this to your clients at a, at a pretty good markup. So, when I will tell you that there are certain categories in or certain industries where we're very, very strong and have lots of content, and then there's others. We're not going to find a lot of industry content, but there's enough there that if the client has their own content or you can help them build content, it's a really, really great program. Where we're really strong in industries are automotive, dental, vet, and, and healthcare. Uh, we've got lots of knowledge and trivia to fill in some gaps. It's not always selling, selling, selling. Sometimes it's putting stuff on there that just just makes people look up, right? People are consumed by the news. Everyone's got 100 apps on their phone that give them late breaking news. And so about 20 different, what we call infotainment genres from sports to you know, stocks to entertainment news, right? So those are all part of the program. Uh, different menu groups for restaurants are easy to edit and work with. Custom templates that you can add and kind of create your own, make it look like you made your own really cool dynamic content very much on the fly. Uh, staff bio uh, templates and, and, and things of that nature. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the entertainment content. People can subscribe to that entertainment program as a feed for their waiting room, but they also have access to the, the, the individual clips as part of the program if they just wanted to drop in some CBS or the price is right on something different, could be their menu board program, could be their showcase, they'd have access to it. The Google reviews that are dynamic, kicks out anything lower than uh, three stars, so that's automated. Social media, Instagram, schedules of events, uh, holiday and seasonal, and certainly weather, you know, based on the, the device's location, but importantly, the, the client's ability to add their own, whether they're, you know, images, videos, they want to create a slideshow. We probably have 45 different templates that would allow a client to take their own media, post it to the screen, wrap text around it, put their own background, and it looks professionally produced. 
So some of the features with this content management system, uh, features and benefits, right? Content, a variety of feeds, templates, whether combined with customers' own media. I mean, that's important. Who's going to manage the program once it's installed? You, you always need to be thinking about that. Are you guys going to do it? Is the client going to do it? Are you going to help them do it, get them started, and then they take it from there? That that's kind of that should be part of the discovery. The ability to schedule content, like right? I've got promotions coming up. Um, there's a calendar feature in there that allows them to kind of pick their start date, pick their stop date. On the stop date, the content stops playing on the screen. Channels are, are cool because they are, we kind of group certain things together, like CBS, or if you're selling to an auto dealership and they want to talk about, you know, the various different type of tire services they offer, you'll find these different groups of content that have many, many, many episodes in one. They drop it in their playlist. It plays them one at a time throughout the playlist. Weather Aware is cool, but it's really specific to automotive services. It's it's basically smart content that, hey, if it's raining or about to rain, and I've got this, this video in there that talks about, hey, it's about to rain outside, and you drop it in your on your screen, and, and the device says, hey, it's calling for some rain uh, in two hours. That type of content scheduled to trigger and then display on the screen with a message like, hey, rain's in the forecast. Have you looked at your wiper blades? Have you checked your tread depth? Things like that. Day partying allows, this is really popular in restaurants. It allows us to kind of schedule or feature, you know, breakfast and lunch and dinner. Um, really, I see it mostly used in, and again, the restaurant space or where we're changing over menus and things like that. I covered on templates, again, the ability to upload their own media. Uh, data feeds, which is going to be your RSS, weather, and other. Post to social is interesting. It allows them, uh, your customer, or you to take any of the content they're loading on their own or a good majority of the content we have in our library. And then as long as they're an administrator for their, for their social media site, and let's, it's going to be mostly Facebook right now, but it allows them to take the, that content and then schedule it as on their feed for Facebook, right? So some customers may have a challenge like, hey, I don't, I don't have a Facebook feed because I don't have enough interesting content, right? So this allows them to get a chance to you know, take some of the content they're either creating or some of the content we've created and go ahead and drop it in to their uh, Facebook feed. And then help on demand. We've got all sorts of videos online that helps our customers. How do I change a price? How do I upload a, um, um, a video and so on, right? Okay. So if there are no more questions as of now, um, I think we can end this. And then I'll send out a link to the recorded webinar with the demo as soon as I can. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you for attending. Uh, thank you, Glenn, for being with us today, despite all the technical difficulties we've encountered. Okay. Yeah, and to everyone who attended today, see you again next week for another um, weekly Vendasta webinar, same day, Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Hello. I'm Doug, and I'm a content strategist here at Spectrio. And as the tech says, a veteran of the digital signage industry. Um, I think I got my first job doing digital signage back in 2013 now. So it's been five years or so that I've been making content and helping customers uh, with their digital signage strategy. We should hop in, you know, take a, a quick look around, not get too deep into it, but show a couple high level things that, um, highlight kind of the, the main things that customers have really liked over the year or the things they found tremendous benefit in. Um, so if we hop over here, you can see that this is, once you log in, this is the dashboard that you see. Um, we're logged in right now as Joe, um, our fictional mechanic who runs a uh, automotive repair shop. Uh, so some of the content and, and layouts you see may be specific to that, but you know whatever your industry, whether it's healthcare, um, restaurant, uh, hotel, whatever, um, you know, there's wrap, there's content, there, there's a solution for you. We're just looking at Joe the mechanic today. So to get started, we will look at uh, making a menu update. Okay. So on the left-hand side over here, 
we're going to go into our playlist and you know we'll see some tabs at the top we've got the menu board but we've also got the waiting room tv but for this one we're going to take a look at the menu board so hopping on over to edit um you'll kind of see uh this is do i have to enable this yes oh it took me back let's try hopping back in there okay perfect so you can kind of see a uh a preview of what the screen would look like. And so to update a menu item, you know, we're just going to scroll down here to menu group one, and, and that's what's on the screen now. And you can see there's room for multiple menu groups. But, you know, let's say you're having a slow month and uh, it's the end of the month, you really need to uh, start generating revenue. Okay. You come into the menu board, maybe jack up your prices a little bit. Save changes, and just like that, um, the the updated pricing would get pushed to the menu board. So, who knew it could be uh, so easy to increase the revenue associated with oil changes? Um, but uh, that's one example of how easy it is to make an update in the CMS. So back here in our, our playlist window, um, the next thing we'll do is uh, upload something we've created outside of the CMS. So um, again, this is for people who kind of have the capabilities, um, whether it's internal design or something you get from a, a franchise. But if you have your own media, you can upload it by just clicking that. We're going to add some files. Um, let's take a look at our desktop. Got this feedback graphic here um, that I created. It's also in our CMS, but uh, I pulled it out to use as an example here. So let's start the upload. Successfully create it. Uh, and then it's going to ask us which ones we want to add it to. Um, so you can push content to multiple screens at the same time. Let's save it. And if we scroll down in our playlist, you can see we've added it. Uh, I think I might have added it uh, yesterday, kind of testing this out. But um, there it is. It, it should only be in there once. But um, you guys get the idea. So again, we've made a menu, quick and e menu change, quick and easy. We've uploaded on graphic, quick and easy. Now let's take a look at some of the editable templates that I had talked about previously. Um, so for that one, we're going to go into the Saved Templates folder. Um, let's go to uh, the template library. And here you can kind of browse all the different templates that we have available. Um, there's multiple pages, there's multiple categories where you can sort. Um, but for this one, we're going to use this coupon template. So it's got a little bit of animation caked in. Um, so literally, we can just call this our oil change special. Yeah. See associate for details. And then, you know, name our price, $19.99. Because not everyone wants to pay over $100 for an oil change. So, um, Let's save our changes. You can see it over there. And just like that, we've kind of created our own coupon that now uh, once we uh, hit Save Changes, it also gets added to the playlist. So if we go over here, back to Playlists, and we scroll down, whoop, I didn't add it. I just created it. Yeah, where'd it go? Here it is. Um, if we add it to the playlist now, we can choose. We'll just put this one in the menu board. Hit add. Now it's in the playlist. There it is. Um, and you're seeing kind of the default thumbnail for it there. That's why it's not reflecting the, the price. But if we went into edit, and we can capture a custom thumbnail, hit OK. But you can see it, it's still the same one as before. Save changes, exit out, and now we've updated the thumbnail for the 
playlist, okay? So last thing I wanna look at is uh, one of our more popular templates, which is employee recognition. So if we hop back into save templates, um, we're gonna use the drop down here and oh, we're gonna go to template library first. And we're gonna look at employee recognition. Um, so you see we got a few to choose from and we're gonna work with this one today. So we'll select it and you'll see uh, something similar before. You've got some text fields over here. So we'll call the employee name Gary. Um, we could write a little bit about Gary, like Gary has been a part of our family since 2013, exclamation point. And then if we want it to, we can add a photo, which we should write because this isn't what Gary looks like. Uh, so we'll click replace here. Um, and I think, yeah, the uploader logo is not coming through because it's opened in a different tab, but um, it works like any upload photo would. I've got him over there. It says it should be good. All right. So if I exit out of that and I click Save Changes over here, there's Gary. Now you've all met my cat. So introducing, uh, you know, customers, guests, patients, you know, however you call your audience to your staff uh, can be as easy as just, you know, uploading a photo and adding a little bit of text. And uh, there you see Gary. So um, what I didn't do with the coupon, I'll do now, and that's actions add to playlist. So you can do it right from there. So again, we will add that, and there you go. Uh, hop back over into our playlist, and there he is. You grab a custom thumbnail like we did before, so that way as we take a look at our playlist, um, you can just, it organizes it a little bit better. So. Um, yeah, that's just a few examples of the types of things you could do. And I mean, what we've spent, I don't know, five minutes, maybe less um, doing those few things. So um, managing your playlist uh, is really easy.